Guys, it's power day. Everything's going great this morning. Guys are already on it. We just got the wire pulled through the conduit, which is progress. They actually came a little bit earlier while we were running a couple errands and got the sweep stubbed up into the panel. So everything's going good so far. Alyssa's down at the other end helping feed the wire into the conduit. Alyssa and I both laughed this morning because it's so reminiscent of pulling the two inch poly through the four inch PVC. That straight sucked. <laughs> anyway, everything's going good. So now that the wire's through, I guess we'll have to lean on the electrician for a little bit of advice on what's next. Oh man, did it go in the conduit? Mm -hmm. What? learned a lesson with the slab. When we poured the slab, we decided not to run any conduits or anything for electrical. And the thinking there was that, you know, you don't always know where those are going to end up. And it made sense to just come through the rim board and kind of work our way through the, through the joists to wherever our, our utility room ends up. The problem is the code requires that we put some sort of main breaker outside. So we're going to have to put a panel outside to disconnect the, the house. Um, if we would have run a conduit underneath the slab and come up inside, we could have avoided putting an outside main breaker. But there may be a small blessing in that we have a lot of other wiring that we want to do outside, like at the garden, the hot tub, the RV, the driveway, the sawmill. And this panel actually has room for eight breakers in it. So we can actually come backwards out of that panel and service a lot of these exterior applications without having to come through the rim board and do all those things again. So we've got to get this mounted up uh, on the outside. We're going to have to do a temporary mount because we obviously don't have our siding on, which we think we're going to do masonry. So there's a bit of foresight required. We're going to put it there temporarily, get the house wired up, and then someday down the road we'll have to pull it off and do something fancy schmancy to make it all look normal. I think it's worth sharing that the reason we're putting this disconnect outside actually is well-founded. Primarily it's for the safety of like firefighter personnel. If the structure were on fire, they could disconnect the power, kill the power to the house, and then safely enter the house. It sounds like some jurisdictions are a little more lenient like this, where if you have the conduit already in and underneath the slab, you can come up in and you can put your main disconnect inside the house. But other jurisdictions require a disconnect outside no matter what which sort of makes sense. I mean, if I was a firefighter, I'd rather just kill the power and go inside. You know what I mean? How'd it go over there? Good, got it all wired up. All right. Do you guys know what motivates Alyssa? There's a lot of things that motivate Alyssa. Heat. Warmth. Heat is a huge motivator. <laughs> Ice cream second. Ice cream's a motivator. Food. Ice cream with a heat source is the best combination. This girl sits in front of the heater and eats ice cream. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to work on getting the uh, mounts for the exterior panel installed. Okay. So that we can get the panel mounted up. Cool. Where's and it going? It's going to go right here in the corner um, where it's convenient uh -huh. to get to. It's going to be the main disconnect for the whole house. Okay. Will um, it be on the wall eventually, or is it going to be freestanding? It, it'll be on the wall. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to grab some two by fours. We're going to mount oh. them to the ICFs, and then we'll mount the panel to that. Uh, of course, someday down the road when we get our masonry siding that we're right. so ambitious about doing, uh, we'll have to figure out how to mount the panel and make it all kind of look right. But it'll be fine just the way it is for a long time. Then we can bring the power up out of the panel and into the house. Cool. That looks like it'll do. And that's good. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Yeah.
I'm gonna go to the other side, love. This, uh, no, probably the next one down. Yeah, right there. Okay, good. And the drill and the screws, and probably ought to grab a level. Yeah, that's great, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. They're actually renumbering all the runways across the country because the poles are shifting and so the runway numbers are wrong now. I do chin-ups on it. I think it'll work. Thank you. That'll do. Perfect. That looks just like an electrical panel board. I picked it specifically. I did. I know you probably went through the pile carefully. Did go through the pile. Said which one of these will look Some really too good. Too long, and that one I was like, oh, perfect. Perfect. Some yeah. had the green little staple plastic things in them. Yeah, there's a lot of. That temporary becomes permanent. So. There's a lot of twice used boards over there. By twice, I mean about ten times. Yeah. In fact, these screws I'm using, I think, are being used for about the tenth time. <laughs> Internet guys are here. Who else should we call? We're having a we're having a tradesman utility party today. Everybody's invited. Bring your own juice. Yeah, a giant cake. <laughs> Perfect. Of course, the finished grade is going to be somewhere around the top of that. Uh, dimple fabric once we backfill all this so that'll actually be about face height uh, Once that's all done for the outlet that we're hoping to put out toward the sawmill It sounds like we can get maybe number eight wire through there Safely it'll be tight, but we can do it just to give enough amps out at the sawmill for a compressor And then after that if we want to go down the driveway for a gate or lights or things like that We can run a smaller wire for less draw there are quite a bit of clearance really important for this stuff not so much maybe more for the phone an inch internet an inch or two between the conduits is so it's not as critical as like the phone or internet or things that are noise related correct okay the only, the only reason you need to keep space in between the power conduits is for C conduction compaction, compaction of the soil oh interesting okay so they don't smash into each other or whatever well that and so there's less settling in the future got it, it will eventually fill in the gaps okay and then leave a dent in the yeah, you have to backfill it a little bit. So if you're concerned about compaction, okay. leave two or so inches between the conduits. All right, Alyssa had to run to town to get parts to make all this stuff work. As is typical, our house is not normal. And so this getting the, the power into the house is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So electrician's working on getting the main secondary voltage into the outside panel. Then we're gonna have to come up and do something kind of creative probably do some bending and melting around the rim board there i guess it'd be the sill plate punch a hole through the rim board and that'll get us inside and then i think we also have another guy working inside here he's putting the the main panel inside the house we don't have power right now so we have no lights inside some of you folks can relate to that and so power is going to come right through the rim board here, which works out pretty good because we still have our UFR ground over here in the corner. And Idaho code, I believe, only requires one UFR ground, but we put in two because there are some areas that require two. In one of our past videos, I think we shared how important the UFR ground is. If you don't put it in your slab or in your footings when you pour, you will regret it. It is not fun. Um, in fact, it's code in most states now, I believe. So we have those because our concrete guy, he saved our bacon. So we'll have to tie into that ground there, even though there's another ground clear over by the panel. So some states require two 
uh, stub up so they can check for continuity through the footings. This is a replacement for grounding rods. If you've never researched Eufer grounds, Google it. You'll learn a whole lot about Mr. Eufer and why he kind of pioneered the whole building footing ground theory. So I think I'm going to help these guys. I'm going to get all this stuff away from the wall and start punching holes through the BCIs. And that way we can get the cable that's coming from that sub panel across into our interior panel. And then once that's all done, I think they can flip the power back on. Even though we'll have power in the house, we don't have anything hooked to it yet. God, I hope they fit. Uh-huh. You're gonna come down. Okay. Right there. Okay. Sorry. Couldn't hold on. <laughs> what in the world? I was gonna that? roll it and then I uh, moon dust and... Holy cow. Oh wow. They're little like not wow. their little cable cutter was broken, so we had to like hacksaw it. Almost. We just had to like get it up on something so we could pull it across the parking lot. So this is what's going from the panel to the other panel. So yeah, it's got a sheath on it. It's basically yeah. four-aught, four-aught, two-aught. It just this has is a so sheath. Gnarly. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. You don't want to know how much this stuff costs a foot. It's um, probably in the three dollar a foot range. A guest. So this is probably two hundred and seventy-five, three hundred dollars in wire. Three hundred bucks, right there. That's of course not counting the two hundred and seventy-five feet of non-sheathed wire that we just pulled through the thousand wow. dollars worth of conduit. The good news is we have a backhoe and we dug our own trench. Building that's, a house isn't cheap. That's where we're saving our money, folks. Subaru is earning its keep again. So the way this panel is set up, this is a grounding bus and another grounding bus here. And then there's a neutral lug for the neutral wire coming from the panel or from the pedestal. And there's a neutral bus. So all of the neutrals will get hooked here. And then you can see a copper bridge running across to this neutral bus. So again, we'll have a bunch of neutrals down here. And then behind here, of course, is the working side, which is the hot side. And each one of these lugs is 120 volts. And of course, when we combine those two, we'll get 240 volts. And we'll have to add the breakers over time as we add circuits to the house. So a two incher would definitely do it. Yeah. Okay. So I think for the conduit coming through the wall, I've got a two and nine sixteenths. That'll definitely get two inch through the wall. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a two inch whole hog that we can use to just cut for the SCR or drill. For the near term, what we're gonna do is push the plywood sheeting back on this lid so that we can punch a hole up that we're gonna get up into the BCIs. Down the road, we'll have to build a knee wall here to enclose all the wires that are gonna be going up into the BCIs. Uh, we're not gonna do that today because it's really easy to notch it out down the road and then it's all good. So for now, we're gonna punch a hole up through, get up into the BCIs, we're gonna come over just a couple of bays, and then we're gonna shoot straight across the BCIs to the other side. And there should be some pre-punched holes in the BCIs. If there's not, where there's not, we're gonna punch a hole. And then we'll run the SER, which is this sheathed cable. We'll run it down to the far corner, and then hopefully where DJ's at, we'll punch a hole through the rim board and through the um, SIP, 
and then we'll come down through conduit into the main breaker panel. Feels like we're A, moving really fast and B, moving really slow. We're trying to be very attentive and present and learn. We don't just want someone to come hook our power up for us. We wanna learn how this process happens and kind of some of the subtleties. We're definitely learning. Uh, typically what happens with that exterior panel is they stub that conduit up. They made it to the bottom of the main panel and if they're like everybody else, you have a stick framed house. So it's nothing to just punch a hole through the sheeting. And then there's no running SER wire because you basically just put the panel on the other side of the wall and you're good. But you guys know our house isn't that simple. Never is, right? So we're running that up through a conduit. We're coming through the rim board because we don't want to drill a hole through the concrete. Then we're going to have to run it down and tether into the U for ground. And then we've got to run this sheathed cable through the uh, eye joist over to the load panel, which will be clear over on the other side of the house. Tell you what, you think those shelving units are expensive at a hundred bucks a pop, but it's times like this where they earn their keep. Look at that. Five minutes and this whole wall is completely clear. Worth every penny. Ah, there we go. So there's a pre-punched hole in the BCI. Oh, there's one there and there. But what size are they? They're inch and a half. Well, that certainly beats drilling a hole. So I say we punch a couple of those out and see if that SCR will fit through there. And if it will, I think we're golden. So there's one, there's one. Boy, they're definitely not lined up though. That really sucks. Aiming the beast. Yep. You're winning. We are. All right. We're just about there. That looks really good. It's kind of ugly down there where I burned it, but. It's okay. I'll take a little sandpaper to it. We don't judge conduit. Right. We don't judge. <laughs> All conduits are beautiful because <laughs> they bring us heat and power. Heat and power. Uh, do you know if there's a distance I need to keep that SCR like back on the BCIs? There are pre-punched holes, but they're they're not lined up. They're, they're going all over the place. No particular distance. Pick pick a spot, snap a line maybe, and just go yep. for it. Yep. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, inch and a half will work. Inch and a half's nice. That's it's it's gonna be tight, and I think we want that. I mean, we don't want it too tight, but that'll work good. Let's see. We're coming into this bay here. So if we go, let's see. Where are those pre punches? It's about four inches from the sill. Going to this bay here. So actually, we need to come over one more. Uh, let's see, these are punched out. They're about two and a half. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drill them because the holes on the BCIs don't line up. So I'm gonna drill our own holes here and then we're gonna pull from here. You said we're gonna pull from here? Uh-huh. Like set it on the stairs and then go that way. Uh-huh. 
Aha. Ja. I'd like to test just a couple holes real quick before I go drill them all and let's make sure we can get the cable through there. Mm -hmm. oh. oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Man, if you coil this up wrong, they'll be really cursing at you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, nice and tight. Come on through, Mr. Wire. Come on through. Can you push up there? Yeah, oh yeah. Nice. That'll do. Inch and a half's great. Okay. Okay, you mean stop or go? I'll keep going, yep. Looking good. Go. And how's our coil looking? It just wants to twist, right? So as you lift up, try to twist that so that coil comes away, right? Yeah. As you lift up here, kind of twist this way and that coil will go away. Yeah. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, more. Good. We're through quite a few here. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, if you wanna just, every time you pop in, just kinda of see where I'm at, we can pull through whatever I've got okay. drilled. That's it. Over the beam. <sighs> and then we can figure out where we want to come through and then come down, right? Yeah, that's okay. Whew, we survived today, guys. Today was hectic. It's always hectic when we have service people here, partly because we're kind of at their mercy and we're not really sure what process has to happen or how things are gonna work out. And we're always willing to work. Video always takes a second priority for us when we have other folks around doing work. Their time is precious, our time is precious, money's precious, all the above, right? The good news is we've got the panel in. That's looking really good. We've got this big, huge wire that is coming through the floor there. And I think the good news is we spent about two hours with the electricians before they left. Instead of having them keep working, we ended up spending a couple of hours just walking through everything that we need to do from here. I'm pretty sure we can take it from here, but we did ask them if we could come back and maybe just check over everything before we energize this inside panel. We do have power to the outside panel, um, that's on, obviously the lights are on, right? So we've got power to the house again, uh, but we just, we just don't have very much power. We've just got our extension cords just like we had this morning. We've got the, the wire run, it's at the box, we've got the conduit up, progress. Tomorrow is gonna be crazy busy. Um, we've gotta put the stub ups for the three quarter and the inch and a quarter conduits. We actually talked to the phone company. No, we didn't. We didn't talk to the phone company. We're waiting to hear from them on throwing some phone cable in that trench. But the electrician said his hunch is that they cannot splice a phone cable in just anywhere. They have to do it kind of at a junction hut or a junction box, of which there's in a different direction than where our trench is going. So we may end up just uh, skipping that again and you know what, if we ever have a chance to hook up to DSL internet or something like that down the road, 
I guess we'll just deal with it. Same thing with natural gas. We're not bringing gas up this trench. Um, same thing. If we get to that down the road, we will. Anyway, once that's done tomorrow, we can start backfilling. That's important. Number one, we've got to get our driveway back. The trench is going to start falling in. So that's number one priority. And we need to get the materials. The electricians gave us a really great materials list that'll help us get the wire through the eye joists over here and down into the panel. And then what I'm thinking it will do probably straight away is just get a couple of outlets wired in uh, so that we can run some heat. We've already got lights. We can just plug those lights into an outlet inside. That way we aren't overtaxing the extension cords anymore. And then we get some heat in here. And I think that is gonna make this area a lot more inviting. We, this week we've been consistently in the high 20 degrees for our low temperatures at night. So it's getting a little bit chilly. Anyway, that's the wrap up guys. It's been a long day. I think we're gonna rest up. We've gotta hit it early tomorrow because we've got a massive to-do list and the property is only about half of it. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow. In case you're wondering, this cable is about $3 per linear foot and I haven't got the bill for this panel yet. But I do have to say, that's a good looking panel. And we have lots of fun, interesting things to share with you guys about what makes these panels unique and how they're designed to limit the number of breakers. And yes, you electricians out there are gonna judge me based on how well we do wiring this. And I can tell you right now, it's probably not gonna be as good as yours, but it'll make electricity.